All right, let's move along, kids, to bitch number two, Peter, the fake kid chocolate, Quillen. And I say the fake kid chocolate because a lot of the shit that this motherfucker's been doing recently, the real kid chocolate, a.k.a. the Cuban bonbon, he would have never pulled this shit. You know what I'm saying? 154 bouts out of that 136 wins. The real kid chocolate, man. He would have never ducked anybody. You know what I'm saying? This is a dude right here. He's one of them undercover bitches. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? He has a nice little style, even though I don't, you know what I'm saying? I don't like pink and shit. You know what I'm saying? I think pink is for is some feminine ass shit. I really don't understand how these young cats is wearing pink and skinny jeans and shit. But anyway, you know what I'm saying? He has a nice little clean cut style, you know what I'm saying? Nice shades, you know what I'm saying? Nice nice bucket right here in this in this picture. But underneath that, man, he's a bitch. You know what I'm saying? He seemed like a cool ass cat. And I hate to go in on him, but it needs to be done. This is real talk. You know what I'm saying? He's a bitch. Recently, he comes out with a statement saying this in reference to his Andy Lee fight coming up in April. Quote, I will take back my WBO title. End quote. Dog. (laughs) How the fuck you gonna take back something that nobody took from you? You vacated the title because you were scared of Matt Carbub, dog. That's why you vacated the title. What the fuck are you talking about? Take back. See that that though that phrase right there, take back. You can't take something back that was never taken from you, dog. So what the fuck are you talking about? Let me rephrase it for you. I will get my WBO title back from a cherry picked opponent. End quote. <laughs> At least a, an opponent that you think is cherry picked. You know what I'm saying? Matt Korobov was an undefeated fighter, 24-0. You know what I'm saying? Now, to the to the casual boxing fans, they didn't know who he was. They probably don't know who he is. Um, they probably know a little bit of him. He's he's pretty he hits pretty hard, right? The hardcore boxing fans and the experts, we know that he was a threat to Peter Quillen. He was. There's no other reason why you vacate your WBO title. You know what I'm saying? Um Andy Lee went in there and knocked this dude out. Now you're like, oh, shit, hold up, hold up. Maybe he wasn't as good as I thought. But see, Andy Lee, he has a lot of holes in this game, right? We know Andy Lee has the same mental capacity as Zab Judah when it beco- when it comes into the boxing ring, right? When we're talking about boxing. Andy Lee is up and down. You don't even, you don't, you never know which Andy Lee you're going to get. The Andy Lee that fought Matt Corbov. That Andy Lee was probably the best Andy Lee that we've seen in a long fucking time, right? Let's go back to the Chavez Jr. fight. He fought really well in that fight. Chavez Jr. was just a better fighter, right? But there's points in that fight where he had mental lapses. He's the boxer. All he had to do was stay on the outside, but he kept getting on the inside. And he was letting Chavez Jr. land him, uh, land punches to the body on the inside because he stayed there. All he had to do was do uh, do what fucking Sergio Martinez did. Sergio Martinez didn't do anything special. He just stayed on the outside. And that's all fucking Andy Lee needed to do, especially having the better hand speed and the better boxing ability, better footwork. That's all he had to do against Chavez Jr., stay on the outside, but he didn't. He had a mental lapse, stayed on the inside. Then he fights, you know, a collection of t- tomato cans, including one of them being 34 and 12, Right? Then he fights John Jackson. Damn near gets knocked the fuck out. Right? Gets basically a gift when John Jackson is up against the fucking ropes going for the knockout. Leaves himself wide open. Andy Lee lands a big punch. End of the fight. If that shit wouldn't have happened, Andy Lee probably would have been knocked out. So that Andy Lee we saw against John Jackson was the terrible one. Right? Then he fights Matt Korobov, and we see one of the we see the best Andy Lee, in my opinion, that we've seen in a very long time, probably the best of his career. Thoroughly dominated Korobov. Now, Peter Quillen is not stupid. You know what I'm saying? He's not a stupid guy. He's very intelligent, and he sees this. There's a lot of holes in Matt Cor. In, in, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Andy Lee's game. 
There's a lot of holes in it. And he sees the, the mental instability that Andy Lee has when he enters the ring. And he thinks he can exploit that. Now, he's taking a gamble here. One, because if we see the Andy Lee that fought against Carr above, Peter Quillen might be in trouble. Granted, I don't think... Uh, I think Andy Lee is still... <laughs> his problem is he's going to try to get on the inside. And that's where Peter Quillen is going to get him. You know what I'm saying? Because he's trying to get on the inside... Peter Quillen is gonna stay on the outside and land his shots. That's what he does, um, and that's I mean, and that's that's how he that's probably how he's gonna beat Andy Lee. But if Andy Lee just tries to outbox Peter Quillen, he could win this fight. But Peter Quillen is banking on the fact that Andy Lee, he doesn't learn from his mistakes, right? I mean, against Korobov, he was fighting another pressure fighter. That's how he got the better of that of that of that matchup. But it's going to be a situation where he's hoping Andy Lee doesn't learn from his mistakes in the past, right? Oh, man. It, it, this is obviously a situation where Peter Quillen didn't want to fight Matt Korobov because he thought he was a threat, 24-0, hard hitter, threat to his O. Now, a lot of you motherfuckers out there like to say Floyd Mayweather guards his O. But this motherfucker right here is the perfect example of that. I mean, look at his last four fights. Lucas Konechny, Gabriel Rosado, yes, he was the type of guy that you don't want to fight, but he's not an elite fighter. You're the WBO champion with elite fighters in your fucking division, and you've been the in the 160-pound division basically your whole fucking career, and you still have not fought an elite fighter. You fought Winky Wright, who was on a goddamn three-year layoff, who hasn't been the same Winky Wright for years. You fought him, and you expect us to give you credit for that shit, bro? Fight somebody, dog. Fight somebody fucking elite. Don't duck mandatories who aren't even elite. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Anyway, connect me Rosado, Fernando Guerrero, and Jickum. Those are his last four fights. I'm gonna read some quotes that I that I that I got. I'm gonna go ahead and reference an old interview back in December. Um, if you guys haven't seen it yet, it's it's an interview by uh, IFL TV. Shout out to IFL TV. They interviewed him, basically asking him about him, you know, relinquishing the WBO title, right? Basically, the first quote I'm gonna read is is uh, him responding to the public, basically the public's. Uh, opinion of him relinquishing his title quote it's like people think i'm not the champ because i vacated the belt like i never accomplished becoming the champ end quote dog you not the champ when you vacate the belt <laughs> you know what i'm saying and people are gonna label you based on what you did last boxing is a fucking sport once again i said for the thousandth time it's a sport that is based on what have you done for me lately? And lately, you relinquish your fucking title against a guy that has less popularity than you do. That's all we see, bruh. That's, casual fans, they see it as this. You relinquish your title against a nobody. At least us experts and fucking hardcore boxing fans, we just see it as, oh, you relinquish your title against somebody who was a threat. You know what I'm saying? We can educate the casual fans and say, nah, it wasn't a nobody. He was a threat. Give him a little bit of credit. He was He's safeguarding his O. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Next quote. Corbuff got 160K to get KO'd by Andy Lee, but he would have gotten 400K to get KO'd by Kid Chocolate. There's a lot to the business behind the scenes. So that quote tells me right there that he was unhappy with the amount of money that Corbuff would have got in that negotiations between the two. But my thing is this. I don't know the specifics. But I can put two and two together. Peter Quillen's the fucking champion. And he's the he's the more popular fighter. I seriously doubt Korobov was getting more than he was. So why the fuck do you care what Korobov was getting? Why are you trying to decrease his amount. And up yours. That's a bitch move. He's 24 No, He deserves to be there. He deserved to fight for the fucking strap. Why are you worried about his money? 
as long as you getting yours. You beat core above, you're going to get more fucking money. Right? So what the fuck are you tripping on? Another quote. And this is in reference to fighting Gennady Golovkin. And this shit just blew my fucking mind. Fighting Gennady Golovkin is high risk, low reward because he's looking for a big fight too. I'm in beating him. All you can say is I beat Gennady Golovkin. End quote. So basically, he's he, he said that Gennady Golovkin doesn't have the name. He doesn't have the money behind him. And it's obvious that he doesn't have the name or the money because he's actually looking for the big name and the money as well. So why fight him? And then he said, if I did fight him and I, and I beat him, all I can say is I fight Gennady Golovkin with this scrunched up face while he's saying it. Motherfucker, Gennady Golovkin is one of the most popular fighters in the sport. He's the most popular fighter in your division. People are saying you ain't shit compared to Gennady Golovkin. You take the back seat to this cat, bro. Do you not destined? Do you not want to be great? Do you not want to be the best? I don't understand these motherfuckers, man. The fact that Gennady Golovkin is one of the most popular fighters in the in the sport of boxing. By your own admission, he's labeled as the boogeyman. And he said it like, and the boogeyman with a scrunched up face. Motherfucker. See, anyway, he said it like that, right? Like it ain't shit. Like he, like he could just knock this motherfucker out real quick. You know what I'm saying? And then you know that a lot of people are fucking, they're avoiding him. When the uh, same interviewer asked him, do you think Gennady Golovkin is being avoided in his division? He immediately was like, no, no. With a scrunched up face, no, no. Shut up, motherfucker, because you're the one avoiding him. you one of them. Because you safeguarding your O. you one of them. If you beat this guy, yes, you're right. You can say, I beat Gennady Golovkin. But on top of that, your fucking career is about to take a major catapult, man. That shit is about to, like, <laughs> like if you were, if you fought, if you were in fucking, in uh, Minnesota, right? If we were, if we were making a comparison to, to how far of a leap you would, you would go. If you were in Minnesota, you beat Janetti Golovkin, you just basically leap to the North Pole, dog. Because this motherfucker is the most popular fighter, one of the most popular fighters in the sport. He's top five, one of the most popular. You know what I'm saying? Synonymous in popularity with Floyd Mayweather and Manny Pacquiao. Granted, he doesn't bring in the money they bring in, but people want to see him fight. They talk about him just as much. So what are you talking about? It's all I can say is I beat Gennady Golovkin. Get the fuck out of here, man. That's obviously a duck. That's obviously a cop-out. So you could just basically say, I don't want to fight the motherfucker because he don't have a big name. But my question to you is, Lucas Konechny had a big name? You know what I'm saying? Who the fuck is Lucas Konechny? Only reason why I know who he is is because I follow boxing to a T. That's it. Nobody else knew him. He had no fucking name. He had no money behind him. Gabriel Rosado... He's known as a tough guy, but he's not the guy that's going to bring in money. Fernando Guerrero, he has no name. He has no money. And then uh, Njikum, Ndam Njikum. When you fought him, he was a nobody. He just basically got his stock rised a little bit when he beat Curtis Steven, but he's still a nobody. Those are your last fucking, or last th- th- three of those were your last three title defenses. The last fight, uh, Njikum, you won the title off that. But those are your last four fights, and three of them were title defenses against three people that don't have money behind their name. So what the fuck are you talking about? Gennady Golovkin doesn't have no money behind his name. He has more money than all three of them dudes that you defended titles against put together. Damn, dude. See, that's what I'm saying. Floyd Mayweather fought a young-ass Canelo, a dude that was like 13 years younger, 20 pounds bigger. Moved to his weight class, only only two pounds off his weight class, and dominated him. How the fuck is he safeguarding his O? 
this dude right here is the one y'all need to be talking about in reference to guys who are safeguarding their fucking O's, man. Damn, I can't stand this shit. And see, Peter Quillen is probably a cool-ass dude. You know what I'm saying? I hate to go in on him, but like I said, this is real talk. You know what I'm saying? He's a cool. He's probably a cool-ass dude. Matter of fact, I seen a video, you know, with him, Andre Berto, um, Zab Judah. They were wearing I Can't Breathe shirts. A couple other fighters. They are wearing I Can't Breathe shirts. You know what I'm saying? And they were, you know, they had a little, some advice and a couple messages for the little duns out there. You know what I'm saying? Letting them know, you know, what's what. You know what I'm saying? It was a nice video. Inspirational. You know, they showed that they were, uh, that they were role models. You know what I'm saying? I got mad respect for him for doing that shit. And he did most of the talking in that video. They have a, they have a couple videos out there. You know what I'm saying? And he does most of the talking. Mad respect. So, outside the ring, he's probably a cool ass dude. But inside the ring, man, inside the ring, the persona that he has inside the ring, I can't stand him. I can't stand him because he don't give a fuck about fans. He don't give a fuck about you. It's obvious based on these comments, these cop-out ass comments, right, and his actions, his actions. All he cares about is the money. That's it. It ain't about the fans. Of course you got to make your cake. You got to make your bread. You know what I'm saying? You in a fucking sport, a combat sport, you can end up with brain damage and shit the next day, right after your last fight. Of course you can. But at the same time, man, the fans are what give you your money, dog. And you want a legacy, a defined legacy, to where when you finish and it's all said and done, you want people to say, yeah, that dude, Kid Chocolate, he was just like the real Kid Chocolate. Never backed down, one of the best to ever do it. And the only way you're going to get that is by not ducking fights, man. By fighting the guys that are threats. That's how you fucking get your legacy defined, bro. Before I close, <laughs> I want to say this, man. There's two fighters back in like 2007 and 2009, that range of years. There's two fighters that I would see on ESPN Friday Night Fights and shit, right? two fighters I couldn't I, I, I would watch them the commentators would just blow these motherfuckers up and I'm just like yo these dudes are not that good I don't see it right one guy's name is Saku Powell y'all remember him right Kasim Uma knocked him off his throne finally I'll be watching these two guys Saku Powell being one of them just like damn man I can't wait for these motherfuckers to lose so the commentators will stop sucking these guys cocks man cause they not that good you know what I'm saying Saku Powell was number one Number two was Peter Quillen. I was never impressed by Peter Quillen at any point in his career. I knew he was a limited fighter. I knew he was limited. And his day is coming. Just like Canelo, Canelo's day already came. Right now, Canelo has nowhere to turn. He's trying to fight, you know, uh, make all his fights pay-per-view. But he's trying to avoid the big fights. You know what I'm saying? Kodo's not a big fight. I don't give a fuck what anybody says. Kodo's a fading fighter. If you watch my Amir Khan video I just did before that, I'll tell you why I think Kodo's a faded fighter, right? In that video. But that's not that's not a that's not a, a threat to me. You know, uh Demetrius Andre, Vane's Martyrosian, the Charlo brothers. Give Arislandi Laura a rematch. Majority of the people, even majority of the Mexican fans think you lost. You know what I'm saying? So he's trying to have all these pay per view events, but he's fighting guys like James Kirkland. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, it, the same thing with Peter Quillen. Same shit. Avoiding the big fights. Let me know what y'all think, man. I'm done ranting. It's like too long of a fucking video. Wasting my time on this dude, man. Let me know what y'all think, but as far as I'm concerned, Peter Quillen is a... <laughs>